I'm your host, Doc Rodden, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on-demand horror movies. Each week, my co-hosts Jeff Moore, Crystal Cleveland, Dave Dreyer, and I will take a look at various spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. Tonight, we have two in store for you, VFW and After Midnight. It's going to be a fun night, but with me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how you doing, bud? I'm doing great. I, I got a good feeling about this podcast. I think we're going to cause oh, talk no. and suspicion, give an exhibition and find out what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, February's looking good for horror movies. Let's just say, right. 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 It is. Oh my all God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> also joining us this week is Crystal Cleveland. She is the living dead girl. Crystal, how you doing? I I'm great. You know, these were some, these were some fun ones. I mean, you know, maybe not in a good way, but not in a fun, but not in a good way. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe. Uh-huh, maybe. Okay. We'll see. I mean, I don't know. Uh-huh. I don't want to give it all away. Maybe well, something's a- knocking at my door. Uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. there's so many places I can go with that. I don't know where to go. <laughs> all right. Rounding out the crew and returning. Uh, he was missing last week, but we found him and drug his sorry ass to this episode. It's the one and only Dave Dreyer. Dave, how you doing? Hello. I'm good. Glad to be back. Sorry I missed last week. We are too, because last uh, last night. Last uh, night. Uh, last week, <laughs> we had Three from Hell, which was a <laughs> Rob Zombie film, which we, you know, we were, uh, we know how much you love Rob Zombie, and we were dying to hear what you would think of it, and you weren't there. I wasn't it. there, and I watched it. Uh, I watched it, and I still didn't show up. I know, So, uh, but you do have to share before we get into things. What was your take? For three from hell, you know, surprisingly, I actually kind of liked it. Oh, uh, I know that's uh, I, again, there are, there are parts of it that, are, that were just absolutely horrid, but you kind of come to expect that. But it, it further solidifies what I've known all along that uh, Rob Zombie has a great eye for for horror films. There were some really actually quite stunning visuals. Then they were simple, simple things, just like you know, outside of there's a a scene where. Uh, uh, the two guys and uh, and baby are just sitting in a car, like outside of a warehouse or something. I don't I don't remember exactly where they were, but just the way it was shot and it was it was just it was like near perfection for, as far as just the overall ambiance of the shot. But then you know, Sherry Moon opens her mouth and ruins everything. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! But uh, there, this this actually had some redeeming redeeming values. It's still horribly written. But uh, it, it was well shot. Uh, if I'd had to rate it, I would have given it a two and a half out of five, which for me and Rob Zombie is, you know, I mean, that's that's pretty good. Freaking, for Yeah, that's a freaking Zombie, stellar yeah. review right there. <laughs> the uh, I, I really liked Bill Mosley and uh, I got I've forgotten the guy, the other guy's name already. Richard um, Drake. Break. Richard Drake. Break, break or Drake? Break. Those, break. I think it's break. Uh, those two together, I think, are, are quite good. I wouldn't mind seeing another movie with just the two of them. And uh, Sherry Moon can stay home and bake a cake or something. Um, oh, uh, <laughs> oh, no, he did I don't. <laughs> you, you might catch some hell for that. Oh, that's okay. It'd probably be a sucky cake anyway. Uh, but, oh, but no, oh, <laughs> Dave. Oh, Dave. No, I think Dave, Dave. No, she, Dave. she's kind of, she's kind of run her. I think she's kind of run her. I, it, I, I mean, I get it. Rob feels a, a reason to, you know, to, to kind of spotlight her, but uh, she she doesn't really need spotlight anymore. Well, <laughs> I mean, was she was she ever really an actress anyway? I mean, like, I never really kind of honestly, I, I never thought she was a great actress. I like her. I think she's cool, but I mean, I've yeah, felt yeah, like I, she... I, I, I really don't know her. I actually thought she was pretty good in, as uh, as uh, Mrs. Strode in the in the first Halloween movie. I actually kind of liked her in that, but she was way over the top in this one with that, again, that, that nonstop cackling. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know what she was supposed to be nuts or I, I, I feel like she was trying to play crazy and yeah, maybe it was a little inauthentic. Like, like it was, it was almost like a Joker type character. Yeah. Anyway. It was just way, way, way over the top and <laughs> yeah. not in a good, and not in a good way. So, you mean uh, but Oscar yeah, Oscar winning performance, <laughs> <laughs> not that yeah, Joker. Oh. <laughs> all, all kidding aside, it, it really was not that horrible of a film, and uh, it, it, it 
it's really kind of shocking to see Sid Hagen. It yeah, you kind of forgotten how yeah. uh, how uh, how uh, rough he got looking there towards the end. I mean, it was, it was great seeing him, but at the same way, kind of sad to see him at the same time. So, but it was nice that they you know were able to get him at least get him in it a little bit. And I I thought they handled his departure reasonably well. Yeah, you know, so so yeah, not bad. Two and a half. Two and a half and not bad. I don't think not bad's going to make it onto the box, but <laughs> I, I do appreciate that you actually half, halfway liked it. It so. could have been yeah. worse. Yeah. It could have been worse. Yes. Are, are you ready for the movies tonight, Dave, though? I am. Yes, I watched them both. All right. Well, that sounds good. All right. Before we get into things, Gruesome Magazine is brought to you by ExpressVPN. A VPN, a virtual private network, is a secure tunnel between your device and and the internet VPNs are used to protect your online traffic from snooping, interference, censorship, and imaginary animals. Or are they? Oh my gosh! Or are they? <laughs> All right, ExpressVPN oh God. Oh God. provides rock-solid <laughs> privacy at blazing speeds, no compromises. Has servers virtually everywhere, 160 locations across 94 countries to keep your real location hidden from prying eyes. They keep you anonymous. And for my money, the best thing is they keep you secure. They encrypt everything. And they also have 24-7 support. So if you're looking to try a VPN, try ExpressVPN. And go to tryexpressvpn.com slash gruesome magazine. All right. Each week, we cover two films. Two films that are streaming our video on demand. And tonight, we have a pair for you. The first one is After Midnight from directors Jeremy Gardner and Christian Stella. Uh, this is released on February 14th, 2020. And its companion tonight is VFW from Joe Bagos. And it is also released on February 14th, 2020. So this is going to be an exciting night. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> so let's get started. Crystal, you're up first. What is your first impression of After Midnight? And I'll get into the the synopsis after you tell us the the skinny here. <laughs> oh, oh, we're gonna do we're gonna do it a little differently now, right? Okay, yeah, that's cool. So, first and foremost, I was I was excited to see um, the actress from Behind the Mask. I love I love her. What's I, I forgot Abby Grant? Her name? Yes, I, Grant. I really like that Bree. Yeah, like I, I really like her. So that was kind of a nice a nice little thing there. I I want to like the movie but it is horribly slow and i appreciate that when we were sent the screener we were warned you know be ready for for what this was and and you know that wasn't enough of a warning it was it's very very slow and very very boring and i'm not talking about a slow burn it's just slow and boring and then i already i knew what was going to happen at the end even already, I was like, just waiting for the time. I was like, oh, that karaoke is going to turn out so poorly. I guess I just, I feel like this movie, <laughs> for horror fans, I, I, I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but it's, de- it's a pass. Oh, it's a pass. It's a pass. Oh, yeah. my. All right. Well, the film is from directors Jeremy Gardner and Christian Stella. The cast includes Jeremy Gardner, Brie Grant, and uh, Justin Benson. Now, Justin Benson is a name that I think Jeff Moore will have a lot to say about, so he'll be coming up next. But the synopsis is, when his long-suffering girlfriend disappears suddenly, leaving a cryptic note as her only explanation, Hank's comfortable life and his sanity begin to crack. From the woods surrounding his house, something terrible starts trying to break in. <laughs> what is it? Jeff Moore, what was your first impression of After Midnight? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like this movie. What? what? Even no, though... no way. No way. Yes, I'll buy no, it. I do. And I, and I think it's... Who paid you? Nobody, nobody. I, I just think it's uh, it's really, I, I like the combination. Uh, it's really kind of a, what it, it's more of a romance with sort of an incidental monster in it, right? It's, there literally is one spot where there's like 35 minutes of dialogue and relationship stuff. And so that's, that's where I, I agree that it's slow, but other than that, I, I enjoyed it. 
I really liked Henry Zabrowski as Wade. I thought he was oh, a he was good funny. comic okay. relief. Mm-hmm. Kind of as, you know, the standard goofy but lovable friend. I also... Mm, with the liked... gorilla fart, right? Yeah, he <laughs> yeah. was funny. Well, he was funny. Oh, yeah. well, that was awesome. That was awesome. I... <laughs> I won't go any farther than that, but, but, uh, I'm a, I'm kind of a, and you know, I probably swayed because I like Jeremy Gardner. He was, uh, behind Andy and the battery film that came out a few years ago, which is a slow moving kind of zombie movie. Uh, but he's also kind of paired with those guys, uh, with, with, uh, Justin Benson and, uh, I think, is it Aaron Moorhead? It is. He had a spot in, uh, spring and he was also in mind's eye and bliss from joe bagos and uh mickey Keene's movie psychopath so you know he's kind of in this kind of enclave or or, or pack of independent filmmakers that seem to keep running into each other so i thought it was kind of cool that justin benson was in this and that he and aaron moorhead were uh looked like about like half of the producing team and his other stuff is uh, with Christian Stella as the uh, co-director. I thought Bree Grant was great. She is just like cute as a button. Yeah. And yeah, it's slow, but I thought it was an interesting way to approach. <sighs> Here was this guy out there that had this, <laughs> was being this. attacked by this monster and uh, nobody would believe him. Nobody else saw him. All of the, nobody ever talked about it. Everything else was about his relationship with Abby, played by Bria Grant. So I don't know. I I found it interesting the way it was cut together and spliced with the different things with the with the monster. That one spot in the third act, which I think was intentionally there to try to lull you to sleep with what you probably knew was coming. I'd almost gotten to the point where I thought that eh, nothing's going to happen here. We're just going to you know, do this relationship thing. And and then it ends with kind of a joke, you know? So <laughs> I, I I'm sorry, but far. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> no, I'm not now, sorry. Now, of <laughs> course, Justin Benson and Aaron uh, Moorhead, they are, of course, behind Endless as well, which you really liked, right? Yeah, yeah. And Spring and Resolution. That's Those right. are awesome movies. And I can't wait for their next one. Of course, of course. It's a chronic. Mm, so what, what crazy names. All right, let's find out with <laughs> Dave Dreher thought. Dave, what was your first impression of After Midnight? Well, I think I'm going to kind of fall in the middle of uh, of our two esteemed colleagues here. I, 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 I certainly didn't like it, but I also didn't hate it. It, it was okay. Uh, I, I could have done without the kind of like the nonlinear storyline. It was kind of confusing there for a while, exactly what the hell was going on lost me. I actually had to go back and like rewind it a few times and be like, okay, what the fuck's going on? But, you know, kind of followed it. That middle section that you're talking about where the two of them sitting in the doorway and blabbering on for 40 minutes about absolutely nothing was just horrendous. Although it was pretty well written and and not well poorly, not too poorly acted, but pointless. It, it just served n- no reason whatsoever. And uh, it bugged me that the guy didn't uh, didn't patch the hole in his door after he shot the <laughs> shotgun through it. Like, what, what kind of fucking idiot lays there asleep where this thing can reach through and grab his head? Buddy, oh, buddy, buddy. But, but that's what I like. I love the way they used that hole, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, that, might yeah. Be, that might be the theme of the night. Yeah, yeah. But with that with that being said, uh, I thought the karaoke uh, ending part was great. I love the kind of over the top. Again, it was kind of a Power Rangers type monster, but I enjoyed it. It was very it was it was very That's a perfect. Description. Yeah, but but it was fun. I actually I actually kind of like that. Oh, no, I like the monster and I like the acting and I like the cinematography, if I could get the word out. It's just boring. <laughs> it was. It, it was very, very boring. But like I said, I, I I can't really sing its praises like Jeff is. But at the same time, I, I can't say don't watch it because there there were portions of it that, that, that I kind of enjoyed. But I, I'm not as well versed in who these filmmakers are. You know, uh, you know, Jeff knows all the ins and outs of these people, but there's definitely something there. But for me, they haven't found their happy place yet. Uh, <laughs> I haven't, haven't found their happy place. But, but it wasn't bad. It was okay. Uh, yeah. Now it seems like we found a theme for tonight, which is 
holes in doors. Because <laughs> both our films have a, a very specific scene with a hole in a door that plays into it. But anyway, yep. I love this film. I absolutely adore this film. I thought this was great. Oh my God. I, I don't I don't understand either of you. I the scene <laughs> the scene that you're talking about, Dave. Yeah. Might be my favorite scene. I feel like God, such a chick flick. That's why I don't. I don't yes. know. I, I'll, I'll have to. I'll have to, re, I'll have to rewatch it. I found well, it I just, just to be very meandering, ooh. and you know, I don't know. It just didn't seem to have any purpose. I mean, they could be saying anything. The guy could be like, "So you like fish?" And she'd be like, "No, yeah. but I have." No, but no, I have no, shoes. It, was, it, was, it was about the relationship. That's <laughs> yeah, I thought, and, I thought and it was... that's what's horrible. And maybe maybe the fact that I wasn't vested in that the, those character arcs it just yeah. meant nothing to me. And and for some reason I did. I got caught up in it mm -hmm. and yeah. I thought that conversation was remarkable. And the fact that it was filmed in one shot and static, I just thought it was an amazing uh, decision and gutsy, you know, because it's just framed in this door. And we know that, you know, crap happens on the other side of this door. Now we're on the wrong side of it looking in, but they're just sitting there chatting away and, and, you know, it's, they're trying to repair this, broken relationship and it and you know it's just it's going south so quickly for them even though it feels like it's going on forever but oh my god i, I could relate to this these this terrible conversation uh the conver the dialogue's not terrible it's just the result of the conversation you know it's just basically ripping them apart but anyway that's just like one scene it is a very long scene i don't think it's 30 minutes but it is long but I loved like when he's out looking and he thinks he hears the cat and there's stuff in there. And there's a couple times when it, it's outside the door. And there's one time when you think you see a hand coming through the hole and then he runs around the outside and it, there's just all these kind of neat things that happen. And the, the, whatever it is, is so fast. You spend a good amount of the film like everybody else in the town, you know, thinking, all right, he, is he, is he just absolutely crazy? <laughs> you know, is, is this, is this, is this a sanity thing? Is it, you know, is there really a monster? And I, I really appreciated that. And I, I liked that it was all tied to the relationship and the fact that when, you know, she comes home and then we've already spoiled a good portion of this. So apologies, spoilers for this, but <laughs> yeah. when she finally make, comes home and, you know, it doesn't show up that night. And, makes you think you know what what is going on of course you know it plays fair we, we've already said we see a monster and you do see a monster and that part of it i i would i had a great time i thought it was so funny and um and and kind of scary it kind of it, it made me jump even though i i knew it was coming it was i mean it was literally was like a jack-in-the-box right the, you know but that mm -hmm. set up but that da, 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 it was him singing that song which he did a pretty good job at it yeah, yeah, yeah. I only hear what I want to. Yeah, yeah. I, I admit I was singing with him. And and I thought that her reaction to it was so sweet and sincere. Oh. I thought she did a great job. The way she would shyly, you know, grin at everybody else in there, and and Justin Benson was the Dick brother in in oh. okay, most, but, most funny way. So I loved it. Are we watching? A horror movie, or are we watching a chick flick? <laughs> we're, we're watching a horror movie. I'm serious. Movie. I don't like chick flicks. I've, I've said it before. I have not seen The Notebook. I have no desire to see The Notebook. I can't stand stuff like that. It's super There's no crazy. monsters in The Notebook. <laughs> yeah, but there's barely a monster in this one. And then you're dealing with, like, is it mental illness? Or, you know, I, I just... Uh, Eh, no, I just, eh, I just can't like, mm -mm. well, I don't mm -hmm. know if he ever truly redeems himself because I think she should leave his ass, but, um, <laughs> I don't think it's, I, you know, I didn't see it as a chick flick, although it is very much a, you know, an emotional drama is, it's really heavy because it's, it's his, him dealing with losing his, his, his girlfriend. He's been a girlfriend for 10 years. You know, the only thing that isn't, the only reason they're not married is because they haven't actually gotten married right there. He hasn't said that. Of course, that's part of the problem. And I liked how it was dealt with. I, I, I enjoyed the, the emotional beats of it. I, I don't know. It, it caught me off guard. I was expecting something a, a little different. I knew it was in this vein, but uh, it, I wasn't expecting to get involved in 
their relationship. And I guess if you don't get involved, it's going to be dull as hell. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe I'm the one that liked this the least. I'm I'm a little shocked. But like I said, though, <laughs> the acting was good. And, and honestly, at points, the cinematography, whoever the DP is, I loved a lot of the shots. And whoever color graded it did a beautiful job. Like it looked really, really nice. And it's, it's cute. It's got its cute moments. And at the end, the end was the best part. It was, it got very funny. Okay. The end was really cute and hilarious and funny to me, but there's just, it just takes way too long. That's like the, literally like the last, like three minutes or four minutes of the movie. (laughs) Yeah. And the movie's only an hour and 23 minutes. So, yeah. but uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I, I think I've got involved in the relationship because uh it was easy, easy to have a, a crush on Abby and I think the guy yeah. you know Hank apparently you know weeding this out through the story put all his effort into you know sort of wooing and courting her kind of like she calls him on it later on and then once he got her then it was that he just kind of went on to do whatever he wanted to. And she was just expected to be part of his world. uh, And I think about her and, and that uh, in the end, that's what she could no longer put up with. Right. And I, and I can relate to that so much. So, Mm -hmm. and once again, we're talking about a chick flick. It sounds like we're talking about a chick flick. (laughs) I'm just pointing it out. I'm just saying, that's all I'm saying. With with a monster that stops by every night. And when does he stop by? <laughs> After midnight. Oh. And, and it was it was like twelve twenty three when all that crap went down. They showed the clock. And it was funny. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if you caught Actually, that. That's a cute. I mean, honestly, that's it's a cute name. That's a cute little you know device there. Still, I got to throw this out here because I I liked the battery uh, when it came out. And so then this one comes along and I went and looked at his filmography and he has this weird movie in between called Tex Montana will survive. <laughs> and so I watched that and I, I thought I was going to die laughing. It's a doc. It's like a found footage comedy of this fake survival show host. And he's just like, does like an 80 minute monologue of stupid shit. That's just freaking hilarious. Jeremy Gardner does it. I, it gave me a different view of him, and I looked at some of the things in this movie with a little more of a, I don't know, a twinkle or a, or a twist, you know, like the, the thing in the end where he, you know, the very last thing that happens, I guess, uh, was just weird, but kind of funny. Yeah. Well, it helped that I believe they liked each other, right? I've mm-hmm. Sometimes that chemistry doesn't come across, right? But I, I believe... No, I believe that they like each other. It doesn't change how boring i'm sorry but horror movie lovers listen to me if you don't know if you're not invested in whoever this dude is who clearly i don't know enough about him to like him it's just bleh. watch the last five minutes of the movie it's just and bleh. that's all you need i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i wish i could i wish i could support it it's just i sat here and i literally was like i uh, i hate myself that I'm wasting my time watching this. Oh, Dave, you're, we're, we're keeping you awful quiet. Do you want to chime <laughs> in before we wrap up? Is there? Uh, I, I, again, I'm finding myself kind of in the middle of the two camps. I, I certainly don't love it as much as uh, you and Jeff do, but I don't hate it as much as uh, Crystal does. I'm just kind of middle of the road there. You know, uh, if you can see it, see it. If you can't, don't worry about it. You're not missing a whole, no. whole lot. You know, and uh, it's just okay. It's there. Mm. All right. So the five or 10 minutes of actual monster in this movie, <laughs> how did that play out for you, Dave? I mean, did you like when we got the glimpse of them early on and then? Yeah, like, yeah I did. I, I really did. I, like, yeah, like you, I knew, you knew it was coming, you know, but I really liked that, uh, your explanation of a Jack in the box way. Cause he just kind of pops up. There he is monster. Woo! You know? And, and again, it was just that, uh, Saban power Rangers looking kind of thing. And it was, it was fun. It was fun. I was smiling, uh, watching it. it. It's not a great looking monster, but Hey, they, they, they went, uh, old school rubber suit. <laughs> they did. They did. <laughs> and, it was... and uh, you know, I got, I got to appreciate that by far. It's the best part of the film, but it, it literally is. It literally is four minutes, maybe. 
you know, in the in the movie. But yeah, I I I, I did. I, I enjoyed that part of it. And I but I don't think we'd want to see that much more of it because it Yeah, I mean, the less we see of that the better. Yeah. The you know, seeing yeah. its shadow yeah. walking by the window or seeing, you know, a glimpse of it before just Yeah, and the little thing like you said, the the hand the hand in the in the hole was was kind of fun. Okay. I admit it could have yeah, used it, a little more of that. It okay, used... but look, no one even died. I'm really not cool with that. Okay. I like <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. About that. Like I'm just saying. Guys. I'm like, I wh- let me tell you. Okay, sorry. Spoiler spoiler alert. I'm sorry. A cat died. A cat died. Uh, we didn't even get to see it though. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> see? I'm like, where's the dead cat? Okay. Well, there, there was a I, little bloody it was, it was there, but it was a real quick flash. Yeah. Uh, okay. with the flashlight. What? When he got bit, I was like, "Oh yeah, the that that dude got it." And then his he just pops right up, and I was like, "No, he got bit." Wah wah wah. I was kind of hoping for him to be dead. I'm not. I mean, that would have that might have changed things for me. I'm like, "Oh, you did all this, and then you just went there." That's <laughs> something, you know. Oh man, I, I was kind of hoping she was going to change into it, but you know. I like yeah, that yeah. when he. I like that when he was like, "Maybe you're a werewolf." <laughs> I kind of like that. I, um, I, I, the conversations were good. I'm not like, really, honestly, I'm not discounting a lot of it, but it's it's not a it's 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 if I want to watch a horror movie, this is not what I want to watch. That's what I'm saying. I would agree that you know if you're going after a horror film, this is not the film to go after, but. If you're on the fringes, you want something that's more. Th- this is very much a film festival film. Oh yeah, very actually, I think it might be good for a guy who really loves horror movies to try to maybe get his girlfriend who's not into horror movies to watch. Maybe, maybe that's a place for it because you know that's I think it's a chick thought. flick because it's a chick flick. What? What? <laughs> chick flick? What? Uh, what crystal? Is it a chick flick? Yes, it is. Uh, chick yes, flick. It is. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Well, let's wrap this up. Let's give our final thought. That's our score and favorite seed. And Crystal, you're up first. So go ahead. Stay on that bandwagon. What's your spiel? Okay. So, so I'm sorry because I like I I like the acting. I like the cinematography. But if you're if you're a horror lover, no, I'm so sorry. I'm giving this a, a one and a half. A one and a half. Oh my yes, God. I am. <laughs> because because what I wanted to see just wasn't enough. I did like the monster, but not enough. And obviously, the best part was the antler beating. I'm yeah, sure, hungry. sure, it's beautiful. Yeah. Like that was actually. I wish it had been enough to save the save it, but it wasn't. <laughs> he goes all out. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, uh, that, and is that your that's your favorite scene? The antler beating. All right. Oh yeah. Dave Dreyer, sir, what is your final thoughts, your score, and favorite scene for After Midnight? I'm going to mirror Crystal on quite a, a bit of it. I, I enjoyed the acting. Uh, I liked the writing. I thought it was, it was, uh, it was, uh, you know, a pretty well written piece. Uh, it was well acted. Just very, very boring. Uh, maybe they're just packaging it wrong because I'm not sure they should be packaging it as a as a horror movie. Uh, it, I really kind of hate to compare it to to this movie because I really love this movie. But there was a movie called Lightning Bug mm. about ten or fifteen years ago that was the same type of thing. It was a drama that had horror elements to it that was done beautifully. But they didn't they didn't they didn't market it as a horror film. And so maybe that's where they're making the mistake with this, but I'm going to give it a two. And, you know, again, if you're looking for uh, a monster movie, this is, this isn't what you want to see, but it's not a, it's not a, it's not a bad film. The the antler beating was going to be my favorite scene as well. So since that's already taken, I'll just go with the monster reveal Mm. uh, at the end, the karaoke monster. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's not a horrible movie. It's just not. But a good you like, th- but you like <laughs> Three from Hell better. Oh. I did like Three from Hell wow. better. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I would have to agree with that statement. If I had the two of them together, and I didn't have a gun to shoot myself, I would watch Three. Wow. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! All right, <laughs> Jeff Moore. What is your final thoughts? Your score and favorite scene after midnight. Okay, so. Uh... <laughs> I love you. I, I don't. I don't have any more final thoughts other than we've all mentioned the acting. I like Bria Grant a lot, and she looks so familiar. But I was having a hard time picking out things she was in, and so I'm going to 
keep a little closer eye on her. And I've just, I like Jeremy Garden. I liked him. I mean, he was Pez Head in Bliss. Yes. <laughs> Pez Head. Oh, Pez Head. <laughs> 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 that's all you need to say is Pez Head. You're like, oh, all right, Pez Head. Yeah, I know him. So soon we forget. Uh, and I really liked the, the character Wade as friend, played by Henry Zabrowski. That guy was just, I don't know. I just thought he was perfect. And I, I liked the, you know, this is going to sound so funny, but I guess it's, you're right. Maybe it shouldn't be marketed as a horror movie, but I, I like the alternating back and forth between the relationship and his encounters with the creature until that one 30, 35, 40 minute stretch there. And I, I really think to a certain extent that was put in to kind of lull you to sleep. <laughs> and, 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 uh, no, I mean, in terms of watching for the monster, right? You know, like sure, all, yeah. Mission, mission, oh, all through God. that, all through that, you're looking for the monster, right? You're expecting the creature to show up, and finally, she just goes, "Well, hmm, guess he's not coming. I'm going to bed." Mm. So we go to the next night, and you're still, for me anyway, I was questioning some things that Doc was quite okay. I'm going too long for final thoughts, so. Uh, <laughs> I, I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed the way the relationship played out, and I thought it was a very well done, you know, that dialogue in there was was a good example, the way, you know, explaining how things happen, how they work out, how people start to grow apart, mm-hmm. which, of course, uh, would be kind of chick flickish. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, but, and, oh, God, I wish I knew what Doc's score was, but I'm, <laughs> I'm giving this uh, three and a half chugalugs and shouts. Mm, nice. Did you give a favorite scene? Did, did I miss that? Oh, favorite scene. My favorite scene, and this is going to really sound weird, was when Shane, the, the, the uh, Abby's brother and Justin Benson's character, who is a cop, drives out there to check on Hank. Mm-hmm. And he's sort of like making fun of him and saying, there's nothing here. It's not, you know, there's not a monster. And, and <laughs> Hank sticks his arm out the hole. And then points it around in circles in different places on the door. What? 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 You don't see this? I I don't know. I just thought that was great. I love the way that that was done. He was just that kind of character. So that's what I'm picking. Mm, that's a good pick. All right. I I I this movie just clicked on all cylinders. I I really did like this film a lot, and I loved the you know the the examination of this guy's psyche, uh, you know, where he was going, how he wasn't equipped to deal with the relationship, be, be whether she was there or gone. He just wasn't able to. And it was interesting. And, you know, throughout the film, he was discovering that. And of course she was when you know, her return as a catalyst for him, you know, realizing the end, all of it, but, you know, throughout most of it, this, this creature, you know, could have been, a cat, you know, a result of his, his, his trying to deal with it, right? It, he, you know, coming up with any excuse not to deal with it. Of course, it's not. There's actually a, a creature. So that you know, and even you, know, you're talking about Justin Benson, his character, the the police officer brother. You know, he he talks about that. Like one out of every three people have seen a flying saucer and he starts asking people in the room. And of course, two people say they've seen a flying saucer. And he just, you know, he just like proves his point. He's so, so smug, and such mm. a dick. But I, I just, it, I got into the character. I got into the relationship. I loved how it was. So it was shot to match the emotion that he's going through his isolation, his loneliness. The cinematography is great. The acting is dead on. Although, Jeremy needs to keep the beard. Just saying, Brie Grant was as cute as a button, like you said. I remember her from Heroes, mm-hmm. right? Oh the yeah, show. Heroes too. Yes, she yeah. had a few I episodes love her. She's awesome. Too. Yeah, 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 that's right. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm going to give this a four right now. This is what? Yeah, this is on my favorite of the go. year list. Yeah. What? I, oh my god! Really, I really like this. Okay, I'm sorry, but I've lost some for you i'm so I know I, I know i can't win if i dislike a film i you know i lose cred if i like a film i lose cred i'm just on a losing cred kind of binge but i uh my my favorite scene 
is, is going to be that scene I think everyone here dislikes. That's the scene where they have this long discussion, this really drawn out kind of painful discussion as they reveal Brie Grant's character's desires. And, and it's a revelation for him too. You know, he, it all starts to click at this point. You know, he understands now why, you know, they finally have a conversation by God, they finally communicate. And, uh, and that's so important. And I liked that. And it, it was, it's this one long take. And I was like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you guys are right. Because at one point I was like, wow, this is one take and look how good they're doing. They're not, they, you know, <laughs> they're getting all this. I wonder if this is like the 10th take or the 50th take. And maybe, maybe that's a, a sign that it was going on too long, but it, it impressed me. And I loved the, the staging of it. I loved how, yeah, I just, this movie really worked for me. <laughs> God. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's right. awesome I'm doc happy. you're an enigma uh you know you just when you think i'm predictable right just when you think i'm predictable all right this is after midnight releasing february 14th so as you're hearing this it's out there on vod check it out if uh you're uh, on uh jeff and my camp if you're in dave and crystal's camp maybe you want to move on to the next one so let's find out what the next one is well it's vf W. And this is from director Joe Bagos. This is the second film we've covered from him this year. The other one was Bliss. Is that right, Jeff? Bliss, right? Correct. Uh, the cast, it. yes, the cast includes, but is not limited to Martin Cove, Stephen Lang, and Sierra yeah. McCormick. Yeah, it also releases <laughs> February 14th. The synopsis is a group of war veterans must defend their local VFW post and an innocent teen against a deranged drug dealer and his relentless army of punk mutants. <laughs> okay, as soon as you get the punk mutants, you know you got to watch this, right? All right, so it's VFW, and we're going to start off with the one and only Dave Dreher. Dave Dreher, what is your first impression of VFW? This movie was kind of a throwback. Uh, this really, for me, had a real kind of Escape from New York vibe going for it, even the musical score. You know, it was heavy on the synth. It was it just it had that gritty, you know, kind of look going on, and a great cast. The cast was was fantastic. It was just a a lot of fun to watch. I really really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, this what's the director again? Joe Bagos. Joe Bagos. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. He he needs to go buy I some like different color. Mm-hmm. He needs to go buy some different color light bulbs though. Uh, I'm really <laughs> tired of, the, <laughs> really tired tired of, of the, yeah, tired of the the pink and the blue. Yeah, it's like, all right, dude, come on, let's go. But uh, he's definitely got his own flair. You can tell it's a, a Joe Bagos movie the minute you start watching it. But by far, the uh, the thing that carries this is the is the stellar cast, oh my and gosh. Uh, it's yeah. very, very, very bloody and violent and yeah. insane. And uh, I uh, really liked it a lot. As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna watch it again tonight after we record this. Oh, nice, uh, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, because the the cast includes uh, William Sadler. David Patrick Kelly from The Warriors. Yeah. George Went. Fred Williamson uh, on the other end. That's on the VFW side. It also has Dora Madison, who was in Bliss, along with Graham Skipper, who's somebody that we talked about mm-hmm. quite a bit. And uh, and many, many others. So let's, let's find out what the rest of the crew think. So, Crystal Cleveland, what is your first impression of VFW? Well, clearly Joe is my kind of man because I loved Bliss, you know that, and I I loved this too. You know, I loved that it was such a simple story. It was like one location. Technically, it was like two locations, but it's like one location pretty much. It, this was a relationship story too, guys. Yes, it was. But it wasn't a chick flick. Was, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it was, it's super gory, lots of blood, lots of machetes and axes to the head, lots of deaths. I mean, yeah, it has pretty much everything I want. And, and you know, I love Marty. I love Marty so Holy much. Cobra Kai! <laughs> yes, yes! Oh, Sweep no, the leg. Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Marty is such a he's such a cool dude and and i think he's very talented as well you know i mean he he's he's really talented and he he looks so good so good for his age i 
I mean, I just, I think everything was great. And I, I loved that he used the same actress as well. I think she's fantastic. And she looked Dora, really Dora sexy. Yeah. yeah, she looked really sexy in this with her hair and everything. I was like, I like it. I don't know if they're dating or they're in a relationship, but they probably get along really well. So that's a yeah. good thing. Yeah, I think there's like this SoCal pals, right? They, you know, uh, Graham Skipper is a part of it too, you know, and a lot of the, the people that we mentioned in the previous one. Yeah, they just seem to share their films. Well, that's, you know, if you work well with people, God, it makes such a difference. You know, like that's why that's why the North Carolina, you know, indie film community is kind of like that here, too. It's like, oh, you're in this and that and that and that and that and that. Basically, every indie film that's filming in yeah, North Carolina. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's the way it goes. <laughs> All right. Jeff Moore, what was your first impression of VFW? I like this a lot, too. And, and to go along with what everybody else said, it's the... Uh, the old farts in the VFW. The old farts. Just, just <laughs> do such a great job of that camaraderie and that joking back and forth. And I don't I don't know how much of that was actually written. It kind of felt like some of it, it did, was ad lib. Right? I agree. Mm-hmm. But you know, when they're in the even right from the beginning and when they're uh, uh I forget who was driving in the pickup. It was uh Walter, oh well, Walter was in the back of the pickup, <laughs> even yes, though we didn't, yes. we didn't know it. Uh, I think it was did did yeah um, yeah. Fred picked up Abe, Fred Williamson. Yes, yes, you're right. And they were kind of jabbing back and forth, and then it was a great bit when they get there and they uh, stop the truck and they bang the side of the truck and up pops Williamson. <laughs> and he was actually, I think, my favorite character. He was. Oh, he was so good. Oh my God. Um, well, they all were, but he, I really enjoyed yeah, them as well. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I love the way they they played off each other, and and the it, you know you bought it. At least I bought it. it. The only thing that I the the plot just seemed totally the decisions and the situations just didn't make any sense to me because it seemed like when they needed to have lots of people assaulting the VFW, there was lots of people there, and then when they needed to have nobody there, then there was nobody there. It was like. I didn't understand why the, these mobs of druggies, hypers, weren't just frenzied trying to pound and break down the door all the time. And they would they would sort of show up and then they'd disappear and then they would show up and then they would disappear. And uh, You mean like the monster in the previous movie? <laughs> well, that was that <laughs> night. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they, uh, well, he wasn't, he wasn't fueled by hype or whatever it was called so anyway <laughs> the drug. but, the, but that and the doors it just seemed to me like they should have been able to get through those doors but i'm okay with that i even even granting that i was it was a great time i i had a ball watching this <laughs> i love vfw as well and the first 10 minutes feels like a john carpenter film Oh my yeah, god! Very much. It from real, the, got a real escape from New York vibe. Yeah, and um, what's the uh, precinct one? What's that one? I saw it on precinct thirteen. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. and also uh, Prince of Darkness a little bit because like the credits take like five minutes to get through. You know, they we see a little bit and it tar- right. you know, uh, and I just love that approach and the music just sounded so close to it and I was like, man, I got need to look and see is it who did the music? Who's this Steve Moore? <laughs> Just kept right. waiting for waiting for Kurt Russell to walk in and go, call me Snake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh yeah, of course. And uh, but oh man, and I I really really enjoyed the relationship between Stephen Lang's Fred and all his crew. You know, you got they they all were distinct personalities. Of although they have this you know commonality, they they weren't this you know they weren't lookalikes, right? They each one and the and the way William Sadler was you know wanting to go to the titty bar all the time it was so cool. I mean, <laughs> and and uh, even Tom Williamson coming in as you know the young recruit that just got home right uh, you know fit in just as well even though there's this big age difference and it worked out well and I I the only the only drawback is that I wish that David Patrick Kelly you know could have been a little mm-hmm. more active in the film a little bit longer but I, I you know his character. I love that actor and I thought he was great in this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought the bad guys were, you know, 
they were the kind of bad guys you have in this kind of film. You know, you get the, this drug Lord dude who sits back and tells his, <laughs> tells everybody to run and do things. You get his sidekick who's a badass, And then you usually have a big mountain monster somewhere. And they had that too. And that was so cool. You know, he was such a, he, he came in and just busted ass and just about took them all out by single handedly. So it, it had plenty of action. It had plenty of gore. And uh, I, I would say, the only thing, and Dave, you and I talked about this beforehand, that I would say against it is that sometimes the cinematography prevented me from seeing what was actually happening. Mm. Yeah, it was very dark a lot. Not yeah. in tone, yeah. but in, like, lit. Well, it, there wasn't much contrast, right? Because they were yeah. you know, they were doing the heavy uh, heavy reds and heavy uh, heavy dark blues and stuff, so the right. contrast. And, and it, it made, it, yeah, you, you couldn't really get a lot of contrast and it might look better in a in a theater setting, actually. Quite frankly, on a bigger screen, it might look. It might play I, a little better. I would imagine. I would imagine. But at the same time, I still loved it. <laughs> I still love this film. All right, we have to talk about spoilers getting into this. So if you have not seen VFW, we're going to spoil it from here on out. I think you get the idea of what we think of it. Come back in about five ten minutes to find our final thought scores and favorite scenes. But right now, we got to get into. All the spoilers. So three, two, one. You've been warned. Spoilers now. All right. From here on, just give it all. Anything you want to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dave, I, I want to go to you because of the gore. There buckets, is a, buckets, buckets of gore. gore. Yeah. Like, like his brother comes in and gets shot in the head, and it literally explodes like a balloon, right? Yes, it absolutely does. Skipper. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. is Grab's giver. And, <laughs> yeah. and when that girl falls off the the yeah. oh my gosh, it's like splat. Yeah, it's, spark. <laughs> it's such a great <laughs> shot, too. Oh man. Yeah, there's there's just all kinds of that stuff. We I mean, like we get machetes to the head, axes to the head. I mean, you name it, it's it's in this. It, it just becomes uh uh, smorgasbord of gore. <laughs> yeah, like when uh, Walter uh, William Sadler's character finds the uh, that saw blade thing that the people brought in, but dropped. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, oh, look what I found. And he's like, going <laughs> yeah. down. and then, oh, man, the way gutter is taken out was. So, mm. Yeah, that was awesome. Oh, my God. Kind of run up the flagpole. Run, yeah, she sure did. A little bit kind of. Well, I'm not going to go there, but. Kind of like Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, like, it was well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, very much so. Well, OK, so he definitely followed a formula with this movie. It it. It definitely has all the little pieces because let's be honest, the, the, the villains, they were a little over the top and they should be, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know what it was about this movie that made it so successful. I think this could have been really bad, you know, it's, <laughs> it don't you, it, yeah. yeah, like, it's like, it's like, Ooh, Ooh, this could be so bad, but he did, he just did it to the point where it's good. And I find that very important. Impressive. I think that's a hard thing to do. Sometimes you don't know when it's enough or not, but this dude likes blood and I yeah. approve. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I came here. Absolutely. Yeah. He does. He absolutely does. Between this and bliss, that, you they, know may, that scene they may have bliss. a shortage of blood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was my favorite scene. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Yes. So good. So but good. I, I think some of the thing that saves it from going too far, like you're saying, is the cast. I think Stephen Lang and William Sadler especially and i would throw fred williamson in there too although he reminded me of the character from dust of dawn quite a bit he seemed oh, like yes. he was playing seemed yes, like he was he playing did. the same yes. guy um, i know I, some of his faces i was like yeah, yeah. oh god yeah i mean not just mm -hmm. his face but it was like oh wow that's shot just like that but i think their chemistry and their characters you know just grounded it they felt it also felt like it was like an 80s late 80s maybe movie because it can't be the current times right because they're talking about being in korea and nam and wouldn't they be well, he did, one of them did go to desert he just came back from the desert so yeah no. yeah the, the kid yeah yeah, yeah. And so yeah, the but frame. they didn't have cell phones they didn't have cell phones so i right. think he was kind of playing with both because mm -hmm. i felt the same way but because they were because that kid yeah the guy oh, sean uh, yeah. sean had come back or whatever from i was like yep. oh nope well, yeah, but he couldn't, I, and, and I thought he's talking about how the one that the stripper he wants to go see 
is the daughter of the one <laughs> daughter of from, the yeah. <laughs> from 1968. And I'm going, holy uh, crap, is that? this can't be modern day because she'd be like 60 years old. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, no, not from, she couldn't be if she was a daughter from 1968 or she was born in 68. Come on, she'd be younger than me. Come on. Um, I well, love okay, the 50 years old, but I, okay. uh, but, but, but I, it makes more sense that it took place like, uh, I'm trying to think of the vehicles were all pretty old so uh, it, it felt like the 80s like right yeah uh, late 80s yeah. early 90s maybe well yeah so i i love the dialogue as well like when um stephen lang's fred's uh character fred was explaining you know he didn't like the mud and you know uh oh, that, yeah. that marty cove's character lou was in the mud too in korea except for it was frozen right yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then uh that you know sean uh, tom williamson's character you know had sand yeah i just i'd love I, it just painted a really interesting picture of him explaining that i just really I, i'm I'm gonna i'm not gonna I'm be able to stop talking about these characters so these this group of vfws or they were they man they were just they really won me over great characters yep. there, there's an interesting thing that i i don't know if you guys are aware of this but the the guy that played tank josh ethier ethier that's the uh, big guy, the monster, the right? The big guy. He's like <laughs> apparently the go-to editor for horror movies. Oh, really? He, oh, really? I, in his credits, cool. he edited Gretel and Hansel. He oh, edited. Whoa. He edited this movie and Bliss, and uh, I don't know if you guys saw it. I I just watched this a standoff at Sparrow Creek, Leatherface, Mayhem, XX. So it, beyond the gates, this, he's like in that group apparently. Right? Yeah, sounds the like the mind's it, eye with with so he's worked with Bagos and uh, a lot of these other people. So I I thought that was interesting. And he's a moose. Oh my god, he's a tank. <laughs> yeah, he he played a character named Bobby in Bliss, but I don't remember Bobby in Bliss. And then he plays like uh you know the guard, the ride, and the driver. <laughs> he, he, he plays the muscle a lot, uh, but he was great in this. Oh my gosh. So I thought I thought that was interesting, and and. Uh, he and Joe Bagos apparently get along because he's done all three of them. <laughs> yeah, there seems yeah. to be a, a click, right? Well, mm-hmm. guys, if you get along with someone, it's worth working with them continual, continuously because, you know, there's always problems with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, one thing, uh, an aside, this is an aside, has nothing to do with everything we just talked about, but I've got to bring it up. And Dave, I've got to bring it up with you in mind. There's a uh, a very familiar name that comes across as you know the production department right the fangoria Mm. did you like seeing that uh yeah this is what this is (laughs) did you like seeing that how'd you you see that did you you make it hot uh uh, yeah this is what the third since since the the takeover or the new ownership Mm -hmm. this is the third i believe movie and they're by far i think probably the, the best one of their three so far they're 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 finding their groove they're finding their groove, yes. They're finding their groove. I, w- I was happy to see that. And it, it felt like a Fangoria film, right? It felt it like yeah, it felt it like did. a film that would very much get spotlighted or spotlit yeah. in, in, a, uh, in a Fangoria magazine. It, it'd be one we'd read about in the pages of Fango and then look forward to seeing and it would never come to our town. Right, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How times have changed. Yes, for the better in that case. Now, one character that I, I think it's kind of – left behind and i don't think it's her fault is sarah mccormick as lizard as oh. elizabeth but i think it's just because who she's acting against but I, I, crystal what did you think does she hold her own uh, uh, <laughs> oh god that she was the weakest part of the movie if i'm was she? completely on yeah i hate to say that though i mean because she didn't hurt the movie she didn't hurt it but yeah she she was basically like the movie is an outfit and she was an earring. That's, that's what she was. She was yeah, okay. Well, well she, yeah, she's but... at the beginning, she's a plot contrivance, right? She's the, mm-hmm. she's the, the reason why everything starts happening, but there is a really good scene for her that makes up for a lot of it where she confronts Fred, Stephen Lang's character after Fred's kind of, kind of feeling like he's lost it all. And she, mm-hmm. she gives him some shit. And I, I thought she, she showed in that scene why she's there as the actress. Sure. Sure. 
<laughs> I, 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 I'm just saying. I, she, uh, really, the cast is full of, for me, legends. Honestly, mm-hmm. these guys are yes. legends, and I think it's hard to share the scene, share your scene with someone like that, and actually, you know, take the attention away. All I was focused on was him. Mm-hmm. Like what they're you- so good, you know. And but she's mm-hmm. great. She didn't detract. She didn't detract from the movie. She just. Di- I I just barely noticed her. That's all. Mm-hmm. But that's good. I think maybe that's kind of how she was supposed to be. Sometimes there are characters that's you're not meant to distract from the squad. She wasn't part of the squad. The squad was helping her. So I feel like mm-hmm. the I feel like the attention was where it was supposed to be on the dudes. Yeah, but you you did remember her if even if you were concentrating more on Fred and Walter and Lou. Now, what about Dora Madison as Gutter? Did did she live up to what you liked in bliss crystal well honestly i was kind of distracted i think she looks so hot (laughs) i was like i was like whoa she's so tough like i i really once you know it's unfortunate again because i think she did a good job but yeah i i just feel like another kind of uh, i hate to say that because it's the two females of the whole flick pretty much, but yeah, it it still was focused on the boys, you Mm -hmm. know, I mean, they, but I think that's what this, what the point of this was, you Mm -hmm. know, I mean, maybe we needed an an old lady, a veteran or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, she did get to go toe to toe with Fred Williamson. So, which was, (laughs) that was great. Actually, when he took the stuff, I was dead. I was like, oh God. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, this is not, I I don't even know what's going to happen here. I was like, I half thought he was going to be like, once again, how you brought up from dusk till dawn. I thought it was, I thought it was going to remind me of him as the vampire. Uh I was like, oh, but yeah, everyone think played very well and like i said just because they didn't stand out that doesn't mean that that that's a bad thing you know I mean, the the every cast you can't focus on everyone there are some people that are meant to stand out and some people that are meant to blend in and i think it's i think it was good i think the director he directed it well i think he understood that and played to that mm-hmm. and i think he got great performances out of all these actors too like well Stephen lang also was a producer so i think that helped no. Yeah. 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 I, I really, I think everyone did great. I mean, I didn't look at any, I, although, you know, who else I barely, the, the main bad dude, I didn't focus on him either. It was really, mm-hmm. these old dudes just kicked booty and I loved them. That's it. They were just, they were just the men. That's all, you know, no, sorry. They were the ones that got all my attention and, 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 and I mean, they weren't ugly. I mean, they were kind of hot too. So I'm just saying, you know. Well, well Jeff, they're they're hot old guys. Jeff, uh, <laughs> what, I mean, are as as a fellow, um, I don't even know where to old go fart. with that. No, fellow, <laughs> fart, uh, are, is it is it fun to see you know the old guys stand up against yeah, these yeah. young little snots and kick their ass? Well, there, there was little things in there that I'm not sure you catch until you get there, but. As you get older, you know, your knees get stiffer and a little more tender. And so you walk a little more gingerly. And like when Fred Williamson got out of the pickup that first time, <laughs> yeah, he he was pretty, I thought that, I think that was realistic. I think that was real. And so, and they didn't like jump up and go running, you know, mm-hmm. they, they were limping. They weren't, you know, anyway, I, yeah. I, I like that a lot. Yeah. I, I, mean, I just looked it up. Fred Williamson is like 82. What? Wow. What? Wow. Wait, what? Yeah, it said what? he was born in 1938. So, that's, damn. Wow, that's impressive. He, he's, a, he's an impressive looking 82 year old. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. I, and I, uh, Stephen Lang is like 66. Same age well, as I am. Yeah. He's, Man, he's intimidating. He's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I well, I liked his. I liked they gave his character those flaws too. You know, he talked about his hands were, you know, his fingers aren't the same. Mm-hmm. And then when he's um, after, after they have their first fight, and the, the you know the bad guys retreat, he's pouring the drinks, and you know he has a hard time, right? He actually spills yeah. one, right, and his hands just won't stay. I I it 
those little touches, I think, really go a long way to make these characters relatable and you feel for them and, you, you know, uh, just it, it was really smart, smart choices to put on there. A lot of people would have skipped over that, right? Well, I yeah, think to make yeah. them human makes them lovable, you know? I mean. Like- well, and, and he, you know, when, when uh, Walter was kind of telling the story, and, and I think it's when uh, Sean walks in and, and says, yeah, to, to look at him, he's, he's certainly not what he used to be. And <laughs> he gets kind of, Fred gets kind of mad at him. You know, he sort of puffs up his chest and glares at him. <laughs> I thought that stuff I thought was was cool. <laughs> That's pretty. T- that's that's. I think everything was written was writ was written was written very natural. <laughs> you know, like I believe that. I think the reactions were very human. Like, of course, the main dude would want to kill them because they killed his brother. It doesn't matter. It's done. You guys are dead. If he has his way, did he? Did he have his way? I don't know. You have to watch and see. <laughs> what? And, and yes i do think regardless you have to watch i think this is a must see a must see uh dave sir let's wrap things up and give our final thoughts our score and favorite scene you're up first give us the skinny the skinny bfw ton of fun i know it's very early in the year but this could show up again in a top 10 list it could happen at the end of the year i really enjoyed it a lot I, I can't think of anything else that we haven't already said. Uh, the cast is killer. Uh, the gore is killer. Just, I liked it. Favorite scene's got to be William Sandler with the, whatever the hell that buzzsaw thing is. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The concrete, <laughs> concrete cutter, concrete, right? Yeah, yeah. Is yeah, that exactly. what it was? I thought uh, it was, yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure. I was like, just, is that a just, chainsaw? His exuberance of finding it. He's like, hey, check this out! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, just... Uh, uh, a, a ton of fun, really, really gory. I'm going to give this a four and a half. I'm going to go four. I was going to go four and a half. I'm going to go four. Four out of five. Four out of five. All right. Yeah. Crystal Cleveland. What's your final thoughts? Your score, favorite scene? VFW. So clearly, I like this one as well. And I think, yes, you definitely need. I think this, I think this movie is going to be fun for us. And I think it's kind of a throwback. I think it's still got a modern feel. I think it's just, it's good. It is fun. I'm also going to give it a four. So that's actually pretty cool. And my favorite scene easily is the flag pulled down the throat. Oh my oh, God, so nice. good. good. I mean, one. I was just like, yes, so good. Like just when you think there wasn't enough gore, he upped his game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> oh, that, that is true. <laughs> that is true. It was, and it was it was it was perfectly timed too, at the end, perfectly edited. Uh, yeah, you you knew it was coming. You were just waiting for when. Yes. All right, Jeff Moore. Your final thoughts. Your score. Favorite scene for VFW. Tons of fun. Great cast. Great interactions between the characters. I'm going to give this a three point seven five. And I'm going to say my favorite scene is uh, when uh, Lizard, Sierra McCormick, uh, uses Fred's lighter. Oh, that's good. Uh, that was good. Because I that's thought good. it was great. That's uh, one of yeah. those yeah. uh, they that go it to you and you're kind of like going, what's the point of this scene? And then you find out later she was listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, man, that was so good. I I love this movie. I uh, The only drawback is you know i said earlier you know sometimes the cinematography works against it you can't see what's going on but i not terribly often that happens right just enough (laughs) to kind of irk you occasionally but it the cast is is such a winning combination of of these guys they i loved each and every one of them uh i i just i loved the John Carpenter feel of the beginning. The first act is just so straight out John Carpenter from the music to the pacing, to the dialogue, to everything, uh, the setup. And uh, man, I just love that feeling. I am, I have become between this and bliss. Now I, I liked mind's eye and almost human fair enough, but bliss and VFW have really won me over. I am a Joe Begos fan. I can't wait for it. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I, let's, let's just let's just start up a PayPal or not a PayPal. What is it? With, a GoFundMe so we can buy a light bulb. They they can't be red or blue. Or, or, or maybe or maybe bucks. just some some yellow filters or yeah, yellow yeah, gel. He does yeah. need some new filters. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe some day scenes, some outdoor scenes. He did well when they were, you know, driving through the city. Anyway, um, that aside, I yeah, this is this is definitely going to be one of my favorites of the year. I'm giving it a four and a half. I'm going to yeah. do it. Yeah, I'm giving it a four and a half, and I'm going to say that Stephen Lang may end up being the actor of the year for for me for this one. <laughs> yeah. I loved him in this, oh. and uh, yeah, Martin Cove was actually pretty good too. It, it took me a while to figure out that he was the guy from Cobra Kai. Oh, hey, really? Really? oh, come on. I, I, I just, I just didn't do it. And you know Marty, what? But Marty has been in a ton of stuff though. Too, yeah, well, like, it certainly has, but you know what finally did is I remembered that commercial he's been doing. Oh, that koala Kai, the, yeah, the yeah, koala yeah, Kai yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, koala Kai. Like, oh yeah. It's the guy from koala Kai. Oh yeah. Okay. I got it now. It just took me a while, but I, I, I got there. I got there. It wasn't much into the movie, but it wasn't the first but. I'm not going to say anything else. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> See this movie. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, your favorite scene. Did you do your favorite scene? I did not. My favorite scene. Holy cow. Uh, uh, oh, my God. My my favorite scene. It's, it, can I say the entire movie? No, that would be too, <laughs> it's too easy. <laughs> That's not a scene. That's not a scene. <laughs> I'm going to say the first attack. When, when they're, you know, they've done all their preparation. We get these little... You know, these little montages of them preparing, you know, cause they only have like, you know, like three bullets left and a couple shotgun shells. So they have to come up with their own weapons and they, they make, you know, they, they make the bombs beer, out of a beer, tennis, the beer cake thing. Yeah. Yeah. And a tennis ball. <laughs> bomb. Okay, I, the Q sticks. How, are how sharp the tennis ball stuff work? Does it, I, it what doesn't that matter. actually is? It doesn't matter. <laughs> they, it had, it had, it had uh, like uh, old timey matchsticks, you know, those big thick ones. Yeah. Shut, Old timey. Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't. You don't find them anymore unless you have a fireplace. Anyway, yeah, I'm. I've dated myself as well. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. So the scene when they finally do break in and they just they kick ass, right? And they just they own own it. And yeah, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> oh man. So there it is. There's our review for VFW. If you want to see it, it comes out February 14th on various uh, VOD and streaming options. So check it out if you can. Find it. Find it. Uh, that Tonight we reviewed After Midnight from Jerry, Jeremy Gardner and Christian Stella and VFW from Joe Beckos. We're just going to change his podcast to the Joe Beckos podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Does he have anything know. new coming out? Does anyone know anything new? Anything uh, I think that's all that's listed so far. Mm. Maybe we'll get another one by the end of the year. Maybe, maybe, maybe. That'd be awesome. All right. Jeff, Dave, Crystal, thank you for uh, joining me tonight. Thank uh, you for having us. It was a ton of fun. Yep. Yeehaw. <laughs> yeah. just keep keep the good weeks rolling all right well i think i think february is going to kick some butt we got some good ones lined up so check back next week to find out what that is all right with that let's say good night good night <laughs> Magazine.